So the final um, set of videos is for this fourth piece of uh, the PyTorch tutorial, which is actually uh, training a classifier in PyTorch. And let's quickly go through it. And again, I'm going to open the Google Colab notebook. And I'm going to make a new uh, copy, open a new tab, and then close the old one. Um, okay, so let's just run through it. The usual um, first line, which makes sure that uh, things are printed on your um, Colab notebook in line. So far, we've not used it, but I think in this particular um, Colab notebook, we will actually have some plots, specifically images, uh, in line. Okay. Um, here we are importing Torch as usual, and then in addition, we are importing um, these uh, modules uh, slash packages called Torch Vision and Torch Vision Transforms. Um, we, sh we shall see what it does. Let me run that. So it says using Torch Vision, it's extremely easy to load Safar 10. Uh, what they mean by that is um, Safar 10 actually has, uh, sorry, Torch Vision actually has a number of standard databases that people use for machine learning. Um, sort of pre-loaded, pre-packaged or whatever, so that it's easy to load uh, those um, load those files. So, uh, which is uh, useful, I suppose, for the purpose of this tutorial, but, uh, but I, I suppose I will show, um, I'll, I'll post a different uh, piece of code if you want to uh, upload your own uh, data into um, this framework. Okay. But for now, we will just use the framework uh, provided by Torch Vision to upload specifically Safar 10 database. Okay, so we've just run that. And this is actually the uh, tools provided by Torch Vision to load Safar 10. They have a specific command, actually, torchvision.datasets.safar10. Uh, uh, that actually loads a training set for Safar 10 and um, test set is uh, this thing, okay? Actually, this I suppose is the um, location of, of the train set and then uh, this command actually loads the train set and so on. So let me run that. It's actually downloading from this location. Extracting, unzipping the compressed files. And it looks like it's happy, it's at 100%. So uh, we can actually see what these variables that we've just created look like. So of course, if we go print classes, That's just this um, tuple, I suppose. It's a list of some sort, but it's officially a tuple. Um, an array of um, text strings. Um, those are the classes in the images. Uh, let's actually see what uh, train set and things like that look like. Let's see if this prints anything. Okay, so it says data set so far 10, number of data points, blah, 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 50,000 root location, um, split, and then transform. So this is a transformation of the training set. So while um, sort of importing slash downloading the training set, uh, a particular transformation was applied. Um, you can look up exactly what this transformation uh, was but I think it subtracts um, one of these quantities and uh, scales by this quantity or something like that. So either subtracts this and scales this, uh, scales by this, or 
scales by this and subtracts by this, uh, subtracts this. Okay, so I should look that up. Um, so it's a pretty simple normalization slash standardization. Um, so that's train set. We also have test set. Um, we can also see what train loader is. It's, uh, they call it a data loader object. Okay, it's a data loader object, um, some weird object. Notice that it already has um, uh, information about what the mini batch size should be and so on. Uh, batch size is four, okay, there are four images um, per mini batch. And then shuffle equals true, presumably it shuffles things before drawing four. Um, um, images from the training set. Uh, num workers equals two. I'm not sure exactly what that means. We can look that up. Okay, so that's train loader and then the test, test set and test loader is the same thing. That's the same idea. Um, let's not delve too much into this particular loading as uh, if you have a completely different data set, you might load the data set in a different manner. Um, so the specifics of this particular thing is not maybe that relevant. Um, let me crash these things. Okay, so here they are going to show us some training images. Let's run this thing. Uh, they are plotting, they are importing matplotlib.pyplot, which is the one that does plots. And we are also importing NumPy as MP. This is just a uh, function that shows images. It's not, again, it's just using plt.imshow. Uh, the only thing this does is actually unnormalize the images. So recall that we normalized by subtracting 0.5 and scaling by 0.5. This actually uh, adds 0.5 and uh, dividing by two um, which uh, I suppose in this case it would have divided by 0.5, so dividing by 2 sort of unnormalizes it. Um, okay, so anyway, so this is just showing the image uh, or function to show the image. Uh, here is maybe something more interesting um, which we have not talked about. Uh, it says data iter equals iter of train loader and then Images comma labels equals data iter dot next. Okay, what is this thing? What's going on here? Um, Python has this notion of an iterator of an iterator object. So you can take a look at this. Um, so if you have a tuple, which is basically kind of a list to be informal, um, and then you create this iterator object, iter of whatever this thing is, this tuple. Um, and what that allows you to do is actually iterate through uh, the list of elements in this array, okay? So let me show that in this Python um, window that I've opened here. So let me just make up um, Okay, so that's A, and then I'm going to say B equals iter of A, um, and then I'm going to say, just like here, I'm going to say print next of B, okay? It says banana, and then next of B is apple, next of B is hi, next of B is hello, and then once you've reached the end of that, list. Again, I'm using the word list informally. This is officially a data structure called tuple, which is very close to, which very similar to a data structure called list in Python, but doesn't matter. Um, and then once you reach the end of that uh, list of elements, um, it says we've stopped the iteration, we've reached the end. Okay. Um, so 
it essentially gives you access to the list one by one. That's what they're doing here. Uh, if you have a single string and you create an iterator object, it will essentially iterate through the uh, characters in that string. Um, okay. So let's look at what this thing does. Uh, so what they're doing is uh, train loader uh, essentially has uh, uh, 12,500 elements, 12,500 elements, the data loader. Uh, it's its own um, class, I suppose, okay? Uh, we can check what that thing contains. So if I go here and go train loader dot, um, these are all, um, I suppose, uh, method slash um, attributes contained uh, that that train loader contains uh, but uh, in any case iter is one of the functions that can operate on train loader so let me just run this thing and then we can examine what images and labels contains so okay first of all we just um, created or, or this thing that just plotted this image uh, it's a four by one by four uh, grid of images with frog, cat, ship, and a plane. Um, uh, and this four corresponds to these four images. It's kind of a cryptic sentence. Um, you can try to parse through it. Uh, we will not worry about it. You can sort of um, less cryptically try to do the same thing. It's not important that you. Uh, plotted in this grid-like manner, it's just a demo. Uh, but I'm more interested in these lines, uh, a little bit more, I suppose. Um, let's actually see what's uh, what's there. Um, if we go um, images, okay, so the, the um, command uh, or the variable images is basically a tensor with those elements, okay? Um, we can see images dot size, um, and then we can say print. Okay, we need to do that. Um, images dot size essentially gives us four comma three comma thirty two comma thirty two, which is similar to um, the image format that we were looking at in the previous uh, uh, video. Uh, so it's a thirty two by thirty two image, uh, three channels because it's color, and there are four images. Okay. So when we say um, iter train loader, it basically picks out just like here um, elements of that data loader list of some sort, um, and looks like each element that iterates through uh, that this iterator iterates through um, is a tensor of this size. It's got four images, three channels, 30 by 32 pixels, right? It's got all those things. Um, and then we can say um, print labels. Um, labels, uh, I suppose, is uh, another tensor, six comma, three comma, eight comma, zero. Excuse me. Uh, why is that? Uh, we can check what labels.
Um, so I'm just repeating what they what they're doing here. If we go classes labels of one, we get a cat. Classes label of zero, we get a frog. Classes label of two, we get a ship. Classes label of three, we get a plane. Okay. So you can look uh, up the command classes to see what it actually does. Um, I will leave you to it. Uh, but but the main point is that the images basically contains a small mini batch. We if we change this to I don't know mini batch size of ten, um, everything else being the same, we, maybe we can change this mini batch to ten as well. Run this, then run this thing. It creates now a list of uh, 10 images uh, and uh, we can run this thing and uh, it's, it now has 10 images, three channels, uh, 32 by 32 pixels, okay. Um, like, like I said, it's not super important to uh, use this particular data loader. Um, if you just have uh, CSV files containing um, matrices corresponding to the images. You can load them and then rearrange them in this form using uh, standard sort of matrix math, numpy, slash PyTorch functionality. So as long as you can do that, you should be all set, okay? So that's about data loading. Um, and, and depending on the type of data, you will have um, differences there. Um, the next is defining the convolutional neural network, which is uh, right here. Uh, because we've already looked at this, let me just very quickly go through it. Um, we have a couple of convolutional layers. We have a max pool layer, fully connected one, two, three. Um, and um, if you have an input set of images, X, in this case, it's going to be a mini batch of 10 uh, is what we are using, looks like. Let me maybe reset it to four, just so we are retaining, I guess, what they intended to do. Um, and I think, uh, anyway, so we are uh, getting the four images, convolutional layer, then a ReLU, then a max pool, another convolutional, another ReLU, another max pool, and then it rearranges itself um, into basically an array or a list, um, which is one dimensional, I believe. And then um, another fully connected layer, fully connected layer, fully connected layer, and then you get the output. And then we, <coughs> this defines the class. Um, and then we define um, an instance of that class um, by using this command. So um, let's then look at, uh, just like before, uh, we can uh, use various criteria. Uh, in the previous video, we used an, um, mean squared error laws just for demonstration. Um, here, uh, we want to do classification, uh, just like we had classification layer in MATLAB as the final layer if you wanted to do classification. Here, what they want you to do is, is essentially use a loss function, which is a cross entropy loss function, which is what we've been using. The, uh, this is the last function for multi-class regression. Um, and we say this is a criterion uh, cross entropy loss. And then we use a optimizer, which is stochastic gradient descent with some learning rate, momentum. Um, and we say that what we want it to operate upon is net dot parameters, which is a set of all parameters that um, this thing contains. Okay, um, so let us run these things. So we've defined what criterion we're going to use, which is how we're going to define the last function and then the optimizer. Um, and oops, maybe I started running this too too quickly. Um, but 
let me clear our foot and let me run this again okay so um i i, I didn't want to run this thing before uh, we actually walk through this thing what's happening here we are um looping through epochs of the stochastic gradient descent for epoch equals um one zero and one basically range two is are the numbers zero and one um it's zero to two but two not included and then if we go this it'll go zero one two three four um and uh, uh anyway so this is just keeping track of uh, the running loss um here we are essentially uh, iterating over the um, elements of the train loader right so wherever this was so train loader essentially if you iterate over it we get little mini batches of images and labels uh, and that's what we are doing here we are using the enumerate command um, and uh, I will just go one, two, three, four, etc. Uh, data uh, in, in the first pass will contain the exact same thing as when uh, we do this data iter dot next, and then the next time it will be the next four images, and then the next four images, and so on. Um, so we are so each of these things is um, going through um, uh, one of these mini batches. Um, and here we are setting the gradients to zero, okay? Um, and then we are computing the outputs as a function of the inputs. So inputs are the four images. Outputs are, uh, I suppose, let's see how many numbers they are. It's 10 numbers, okay? Um, and then uh, these 10 numbers are just, um, the final term numbers that you get out before I think um, a softmax uh, layer gets added. I think the um, cross entropy loss adds a softmax layer. Um, in any case, let's see here where are we. Um, so loss uh, it uh, computes a loss between the outputs and the labels. Good, um, and then. Um, loss that backward essentially computes the gradient of the loss with respect to um, net uh, dot parameters so net dot parameters by definition is the by default i suppose is the variable with respect to which you're defining the gradients um, so if, if you recall we had this uh, uh, flag called requires gradient equals true. Uh, net dot parameters has that flag set to be true by default. So as soon as this neural network is defined, um, these parameters become the parameters with respect to which you're differentiating everything. Let's keep moving here. So we are computing the gradients and then optimizer dot step essentially takes one gradient step. So I didn't quite go through this, but um, when you define um, this uh, object called optimizer, um, optim.sgd, uh, which is basically uh, a um, um, essentially an optimizer, and, and what it does is uh, when you do optimizer.step, it actually takes one step of uh, the gradient descent. Um, okay. So it, it knows what parameters to modify, and then there's only one gradient. It's it's uh, this thing dot grad or whatever um, variables it has dot grad, uh, and it basically takes a gradient step with this learning rate and then this momentum. Okay, pretty simple. So we, instead of writing this, we could have just written um, all the parameters in net dot parameters. Like for instance, the uh, parameters and um, so we can check 
um, let me just open a new code block net dot parameter uh, net dot um, did we run these things yet maybe we didn't run these things Okay, there we are. Um, okay, for instance, there are these parameters, and then we we essentially will be uh, uh, looping over all such or, or modifying all these parameters. Okay, let me crash this. Okay, so we run this. We run this. Uh, let me just run this thing now. Hopefully we haven't um, Let me run this again just to be sure So it's now running stochastic gradient descent And um, it's outputting information every 2,000 mini batches. So that's what it's doing now. This is the last function, which is decreasing. It's not quite reporting the accuracy yet, but okay. So we can let it run for a while, and then um, uh, this saves the train network, and then this um, uh, displays the results for a few images in the test loader okay so it sort of tests a few random images uh, and um, you can also check um, the fraction of uh, uh, accuracy i suppose uh, somewhere oh. <laughs> okay Let's see how far we have gotten here. So it's done with epoch number one. It's now going to epoch number two. What we are printing is epoch and then uh, the mini batch size within the epoch, mini batch index within the epoch. <coughs> uh, we are getting, we'll wait until we get to 12,000. I seem to have changed this to five. Um, so it's actually going to do five, five epochs rather than um, three. So let me actually, or, or two, let me actually stop this maybe. It's a keyboard interrupt, unfortunately, that's okay. Let's see if we can proceed further. Looks like it's fine. Okay, so we have a cat, it's hard to see, but cat, ship, ship, and the plane, uh, and the neural network trained thus far thinks it's cat, ship, ship, ship. Not too bad. Um, and then I think this does the um, 
uh, accuracy of the network. 54%, which is not amazing. Uh, this is a pretty shallow network, so this is no better than training a couple of um, um, layers in MATLAB. Um, so it's exactly the same thing, so you don't necessarily expect it to work better um, just because it's Python or something like that. Um, so it's, it's a couple of layers and you get about 50% accuracy. Recall that because there are 10 classes, um, if you just uh, picked randomly, you would have 10% accuracy. So 50% is still much higher than 10, um, but we could do much better with more layers, is the idea. Um, so I think I'm gonna have you guys do more layers um, in the homework. Um, this cell actually computes the accuracy for each uh, class in the uh, test um, test set. So if you actually have a plane, you get 41% accuracy. If you have a car, you get 75%. Ship, for some reason, is 83%, and so on. Um, and then we can train uh, everything on GPU as well, and you can try to see how that works. Okay, so that's the basic idea. Um, most of this, um, I would say, they are using some cryptic code, um, which could probably be made less cryptic by just writing things out in long form. So this, for instance, feels a little bit cryptic, but uh, you, could, you could write it out in long form and make it simpler. But mostly there's uh, conceptually nothing much to it. You laid, load some data, um, you define a neural network here, um, you define a criterion. Um, so in MATLAB, the criterion and the neural network are sort of mixed together where the last line of the network is the criterion classification layer or regression layer. Here, um, the criterion is separated from the network. This is a neural network and this is the criterion. And then we do stochastic gradient descent. They've used this uh, optimizer.step, but really that's just hiding a very, very simple step, which just says, uh, which basically loops through all the parameters in the neural network and then updates all of them based on the gradient that they have, okay? Um, so that's it for this video. Um, and I guess we will see more examples.